As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. You only live today once. Why do it alone? Branch together. Hey gang, it's another beautiful day to turn to the Bible together. Today we're going to be reading Luke chapter 8, which has a few parables, a couple pictures of healing, and a story where Jesus calms the storm and this actually scares his disciples. They don't really get who he is yet at this point in the historical drama. When we read the healings, remember, they are pictures of what Jesus came to do. He heals people on earth as a symbol of the bigger and more important healing that he provides, both to the individual spiritually, uh, what we call salvation, but also to the world cosmically. Jesus is starting his plan of restoration and healing to the earth. And, and the healings he does in, in these stories are, are pictures of that bigger healing. Okay, let's pray and we'll read Luke chapter 8 today. Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit is with us today, that, that your Spirit opens the words on these page, speaks to our hearts, speaks to our minds. God, convict us where we need to be corrected. Encourage us where we need to be built up and edified. God, I pray that we, um, we learn from your word, and uh, as believers, we challenge each other with what we we learn here each day. Help us to be a community that spurs each other on towards love and good works. In your name we pray. Amen. Luke chapter 8. Sometime afterward, he went on through the towns and villages, preaching and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him and also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and disabilities, Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod's household manager, Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their own resources. While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from one town after another, he spoke to them in a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell along the path and was trampled on, and the wild birds devoured it. Other seed fell on rock, and when it came up, it withered because it had no moisture. Other seed fell among the thorns, and they grew up with it and choked it out. But other seed fell on good soil and grew, and it produced a hundred times as much grain. As he said this, he called out, The one who has ears to hear had better listen. Then his disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, You have been given the opportunity to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but for others they are in parables, so that although they see, they may not see, and although they hear, they may not understand. Now the parable means this. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rock are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in a time of testing fall away. As for the seed that fell among thorns, these are the ones who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the worries and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. But as for the seed that landed on good soil, these are the ones who, after hearing the word, cling to it with an honest and good heart and bear fruit with steadfast endurance. 
No one lights a lamp and then covers it with a jar or puts it under a bed, but puts it on a lampstand so that those who come in can see the light. For nothing is hidden that will not be revealed, and nothing concealed that will not be made known and brought to light. So listen carefully, for whoever has will be given more, but whoever does not have, even what he thinks he has will be taken from him. Now Jesus' mother and his brothers came to him, but they could not get near him because of the crowd. So he was told, Your mother and your brothers are standing outside, wanting to see you. But he replied to them, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. One day Jesus got into a boat and his disciples and said to them, with his disciples, and said to them, Let's go across to the other side of the lake. So they set out, and as they sailed, he fell asleep. Now a violent windstorm came down on the lake, and the boat started filling up with water, and they were in danger. They came and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we are about to die. So he got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. They died down, and it was calm. Then he said to them, Where is your faith? But they were afraid and amazed, saying to one another, Who then is this? He commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. So they sailed over to the region of Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As Jesus stepped ashore, a certain man from the town met him who was possessed by demons. For a long time this man had worn no clothes and had not lived in a house but among the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him, and shouted with a loud voice, Leave me alone, Jesus, Son of the Most High God. I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had started commanding the evil spirit to come out of the man, for it had seized him many times, so he would be bound with chains and shackles and kept under guard, but he would break the restraints and be driven by the demon into deserted places. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, because many demons had entered him, and they began to beg him not to order them to depart into the abyss. Now a large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside, and the, demoniac, and the demonic spirits begged Jesus to let him go into them. He gave them permission. So the demons came out of the man and went into the pigs, and the herd of pigs rushed down the steep slope into the lake and drowned. When the herdsmen saw what happened, they ran off and spread the news in the town and countryside. So the people went out to see what had happened, and they came to Jesus. They found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the man had been demon-possessed and had been healed. Then all the people in the garrisons and the surrounding region asked Jesus to leave them alone, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and left. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare what God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the whole town what Jesus had done for him. Now when Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed him, because they were all waiting for him. Then a man named Jairus, who was a ruler of the synagogue, came up. Falling at Jesus' feet, he pleaded with him to come to his house because he, had only, because he had an only daughter, about 12 years old, and she was dying. As Jesus was on his way, the crowds pressed around him. Now a woman was there who had been suffering from a hemorrhage for 12 years, but could not be healed by anyone. She came up behind Jesus and touched the edge of his cloak, and at once the bleeding stopped. Then Jesus asked, Who was it who touched me? When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the crowds are surrounding you and pressing against you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me, for I know that power has gone out of me. When the woman saw that she could not escape notice, she came trembling and fell down before him. In the presence of all the people, she explained why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. Then he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. While he was still speaking, someone from the synagogue ruler's house came and said, 
your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher any longer. But when Jesus heard this, he told him, Do not be afraid. Just believe, and she will be healed. Now when he came to the house, Jesus did not let anyone go in with him except Peter, John, and James, and the child's father and mother. Now they were all wailing and mourning for her, but he said, Stop your weeping. She is not dead, but asleep. And they began making fun of him, because they knew that she was dead. But Jesus gently took her by the hand and said, Child, get up. Her spirit returned, and she got up immediately. Then he told them to give her something to eat. Her parents were astonished, but he ordered them to tell no one what had happened. Today we're going to dig into verses 16 through 18. Because when I read this today, I was I was confused. I, I had to take a step back and look a bit closer to understand what was going on. Let me reread this section, starting with verse 16. No one lights a lamp and then covers it with a jar or puts it under a bed, but puts it on a lampstand so that those who come in can see the light. For nothing is hidden that will not be revealed and nothing concealed that will not be made known and brought to light. So listen carefully, for whoever has will be given more, but whoever does not have, even what he thinks he has, will be taken from him. The first thing we do when trying to understand uh, a section of scripture is to make sure we understand the immediate context, meaning the verses right around it. Well, it looks here that These three verses are related to each other, and all three Bible translations that I quickly looked at had them all grouped together in a paragraph, uh, usually with a heading of their own. So it's probably a a single teaching, a single unit, or a single parable in this case. When we read verse 16, it says that no one covers up a light. And when I've read this in the past, I thought that this light was referring to our light as Christians. But then the next verse says, nothing that is hidden won't be brought to light. I feel like every time I hear someone preach about that verse, they're saying, whatever sin is in your life, it will be brought to light. So watch out. Then then the last verse in this group says that whoever has will be given more and and whoever doesn't, it will be taken from him. When I hear that, I I feel like people are usually connecting that to some financial wealth, like a prophetic counterpart to saying the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. I actually think that last interpretation of verse 18 is probably way off, but let's leave that for now. So I I read a bit more, looked at the context, and um, here's my best explanation of what I think Jesus is teaching here. Jesus is illustrating the importance of his teaching and its authority. I don't think the light image here is our Christian witness, but rather the teaching of Jesus or perhaps the word of God. Here's why I think that. The closing verse in this section, in verse 18, if we look at the New Living Translation, it says, So pay attention to how you hear. To those who listen to my teaching, more will more understanding will be given the light is jesus's teaching and when it's lifted up and when it's put on a stand it will guide us now and eventually expose the darkness and bring all the sin and corruption to light but a choice must be made by the reader a choice must be made by us Either we can receive the light of Christ's teaching by responding in obedience, in which case more spiritual blessings will come our way, or we face the exposure of that light revealing our depravity and what we thought we had will actually be lost. I think that's our challenge for today. As we continue through this gospel, we'll see more of Jesus' teaching, and we should take it seriously. Okay, that's it for today. I love you guys. I love this thing we do each day, and I will see you tomorrow.